Hello, everyone. I pray today that you know and are encouraged by the comfort of the Father. The Father's always trying to comfort us. I once read somewhere that this says, if you preach to people in need and pain, you always have an audience. Why? Because all of us want to be comforted. And so one of the promises of God is his comfort. I'm going to read Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 5. You recognize them from Handel's Messiah. And we typically sing them at Christmas, you know, and we get all excited. But the idea there is not just Christmas. The idea there is that the Father is speaking comfort to each and every one of us. Think in your own lives. Those times when you needed comfort, presence, somewhere in there with you. I recall years ago, and even more recently, when I was in dire straits, I needed comfort. I needed care. I called a friend, expecting some kind of words of comfort and care. Instead, I ended up hearing about his tenant woes and problems. But then there was a knock on my door. It was another old friend who just came by to say, Jer, let's have coffee. And what happened there? That person was giving me the comfort and the care that I needed. Often, the Father will give us care and comfort in places that we don't expect, like the knock on the door. But the Father speaks there. It took a while for me to process what I was feeling with my friend who told me more about his tenant problems than listening to my need for care and my grief. The Father spoke there. And here's what Isaiah says to us. Isaiah 40, 1 through 5. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received the Lord's hand double for her sins. A voice calling, clear the way for the Lord in, in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. Let the rough places be made plain and the rugged terrain made into a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. What is he saying to us in that passage? He's saying, let me comfort you. Let me speak into you. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city, yes, in that context, but in our context, it is speak to us. It is speak into our hearts, our minds, our souls, words of comfort that we may understand and know the Father, that her warfare has ended. We can have the peace of God when we realize and the comfort of God when we realize that we don't have to strive anymore. We can be still before the Father and let the Father speak deeply into our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Hebrews picks that up this way. Rest. There's a Sabbath rest for believers. What's the idea there? Is that I trust the Father. Why? Because he's speaking comfort to me. He's speaking kindly to me, not harshly, not words of judgment, but words of care, words of comfort, words of joy, words of hope that we may see and know and understand what it is he is doing. Rest there. But then he goes on, because as he talks about the broad places and the, every mountain and hill made low, what is he really talking about in our lives? Because we look at this and we, we imagine in our minds broad vistas of plains and hills that have been brought down low, valleys lifted up. But what is he saying here? Here it is, here's a, here it is again. A voice calling, clear the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low, and the rough places made plain, and the rugged terrain into a broad valley. Those are pieces of our lives. Yes, here's the first piece. That we 
sometimes feel like we're in the desert. And he says, a highway in the desert. Now, during warfare and other times, and even now in the desert, people have to find out where they are. And sometimes we now we can use global positioning. But before you had to create a highway, a pathway in the desert and then mark it as you went. Well, that's the idea here. That the Father in the desert places in our lives has made a highway with markers for us to see him. Several years ago, I had some dear friends going through a horrendous, horrendous trial. And in that trial, we kept encouraging them with the ideas that there's a highway there. The Father's there. There's provision in the desert. And they, as they began to rest there and let the Father speak there, at the end of the trial, they realized, yes, in the middle of the desert, there was a highway pointing to the Father. There was provision in the middle of the desert. In our deserts today, there is a highway leading to the Father. Let every valley be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. What's the idea? It's not just making things straight and plain. But the idea there is this, that the valleys when we feel like we're at our lowest, the Father lifts us up. When we feel as though we can't go on any further, deep in that dark valley, we feel the hand of the Father lifting us, encouraging us, speaking into us, helping us to understand and know him. And then there are mountains. Those things that just seem too hard. It's a mountain we can't climb. It's a hill that we just can't get over. It's, some, it's an obstacle in our way. What does Jesus say? If you have a little bit of faith, you can move mountains. You can say to this mountain, be gone and cast it into the sea. What's the idea there? That as we trust the Father, those mountains and hills are made low. Because suddenly they don't seem to be as high when we're looking at them and, and, and being encouraged by the Father as he speaks into us words of comfort. Because remember, he begins this passage, comfort. Oh, comfort my people. Speak kindly to them. And then he says, speak, let them hear and know a voice calling, clear the way for the Lord. In other words, pay attention to what God is doing and saying in your lives. And let the rough places become ma made plain and the rugged places a terrain into a broad valley. Made plain, made smooth, easier climbing, easier walking, that we're able to see and understand the Father. Because when we get out to a broad plain, think of pasture where the Father says, come, rest. You've worked hard. Come, be still. Come. What has happened here? The Father has spoken to the issues of our lives. He's spoken to the wilderness. He's spoken to the desert. He's spoken to the valleys. He's spoken to the mountains and the hills, to the rough places in our lives. Now he invites us to a broad valley to enjoy his presence. Comfort. Oh, comfort you, my people. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. Then, he says this, the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Why in this stanza with that? Because all of us see and understand and know that God has done this. He has sent us his son to do just those things in our lives that we may understand and know the presence of the Father, that the Father is there with us, for us, in us. Comfort. Comfort my people. Speak gently, kindly to Jerusalem that we may know the care and comfort of the Father. Lord God, we bless you for today. Lord, we thank you for the care and comfort you give us. Thank you, Father, for making the rough places straight, plain, for giving us a roadmap to you when we feel like we're in the desert. You move the mountains and the hills. You make them low. You lift us up in the valleys that we may see and know you and rest in you. Lord, we bless you and praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Be blessed today, my dear friends.